Hello, so another thing B-Store kindly sent me is an IP4 rebreather, so we're going to open this and have a look at it now. Um, but I'll just go into a quick safety note about rebreathers. Oh, by the way, with B-Store, the link will be below to his eBay page if anyone's interested in that. But a safety note with rebreathers. Now, if you're going to use a rebreather, you need to be trained to use a rebreather, because there's lots of things that can go wrong with them. So obviously, you know, you have to actually have properly trained qualifications. You don't have to, but you're putting yourself at risk if you don't. Also, if you're going to use a rebreather, you should use a very modern rebreather that's had all the safety checks done on it and stuff, and not surplus rebreathers. Now, obviously, you can buy a rebreather like this and use it if you want to, but it's highly recommended rebreathers are used like this, are just used as sort of display pieces or interesting things. You know, so I'll be showing you the rebreather, but I'm not going to mess about with the CO2 scrubber in them. For those of you that don't know how rebreathers work, it's pretty simple in a way. Basically, you're breathing out and in of a conversion chamber. The conversion chamber, the CO2 scrubber, scrubs CO2 from the air you breathe out. So when you breathe out, you're breathing out nitrogen, uh, carbon dioxide and oxygen. Um, but there's more carbon dioxide and oxygen. So what the scrubber does is it takes the CO2 out, so the oxygen is essentially being recycled. Now, the big issue is with rebreathers is eventually it will get to the stage where there's not enough oxygen for you to carry on breathing safely, um, but you won't be able to realise you're suffocating because there's not actually um, CO2 in the air you're breathing back in, meaning that you can obviously suffocate without realising it. So, that's why people with rebreather training are needed, so they actually know, you know, there's signs they can tell of when the air's getting too thin. Um, but anyway, like I won't keep going over the safety stuff because I've talked about rebreathers before, but I just do really want to stress that if you're going to buy a rebreather, you might want to kind of pay attention to how they work and everything before messing about with it. So anyway, here's the rebreather. What I'm going to do is open this up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just pan the camera down so you can see everything. Okay, here we go. So let me tuck this behind. So what we have right at the top is the CO2 scrubber. This is this giant canister here. And what the scrubber does is obviously the thing that has a pin on there, a bit like a grenade. Um, so you would pull this off. Um, you probably have to do something of like all the taps and everything as well. There's a bit of the pin there. Um, and then that would start working. So obviously on that thing I think you'd have each end wired up with the rebreather. One hose going in one side, one hose going in the other side. Now lower down in the bag you can see the actual rebreather itself. So let's pull this out. I may have to put this on the floor. Uh, to show you all this and then get it out and you know go back to it but ah, that's just some useless um, sort of paper in there I uh, thought that might have actually been a bit of the rebreather but it's not anyway let me put this down get it all out and then show it you okay so I believe this is actually the IP4M and I think there's another name like uh, 70, something like 76M or something for one of these I'm not sure the exact number um, but the IP4M is the one with like the triangular lenses and this bit on. The other regular IP4 kind of looks like a GP5 with just two round lenses, a bit um, like the IP5 looks like. What's interesting though is there's an oral nasal cup in this. So um, yeah, that is interesting. Um, assuming that wouldn't be a speech diaphragm on there because surely that wouldn't work underwater. Um, but anyway, let's pop the mask on uh, if it will fit me. What year is this one from? This one is actually from 91, so this may be a post-Soviet one that was just still made. So anyway, let's get it on. So at the moment I can actually uh, just breathe through the pipe. Um, obviously this is not a gas mask like Ghost Fred on here. This is simply a uh, thing like that. Yeah, I think that's just a voice diaphragm in there, because at the moment, there's, there's definitely no exhaled air coming out. So, how this would work, uh, if we get the rebreather bag again in a moment, is I'm assuming, as you can see, it pressurises fine, like it would have to being a rebreather. What I'm assuming would happen is that, um... Uh, just a side note, this reminds me a lot of the PMK, but it's like a PMK with an oral nasal cup in it, as you can see, so it's actually a good version of PMK. It's also a bit like an M9 in some ways. So anyway, 
Uh, I'll get the setup bag and we'll see if we can work out how it plugs together. But as I said, I'm not going to actually plug anything together and pull the pin. Because um, you really don't mess about with rebreathers unless you're trained to do it. Okay, in the bag I also found some outserts hidden in there. And uh, the manual. So, let's have a look at the manual. Is there any pictures in it? Okay, there's some signed documents in here. Uh, so anyway, uh, first we've got an introduction kind of it. Then we've got a lot of the actual rebreathers, uh, technical stuff I guess. There's some like stamped and signed documents I guess when they did a safety inspection on it. More Cyrillic, uh, like a lot of bit for it. Have a look at it. And that's it, right. Yes, let's see if I can get the outserts on it. Okay, just to show you quickly, there's the rebreather with the outserts on. I assume that's just to give it some lens protection when underwater or you're using it like most outserts are for. Um, so yeah, that's quite a goggly eyed respirator now, or rebreather even. Anyway, so let me get the satchel over, and then we can see if we can figure out how it all connects up, because there's actually a bladder as well um, with the rebreather inside the bag. So. Let's have a look at all of this and work out if we'll see if we can work out how it all connects up. So you've got your pouch here, which I guess is just to seal it. So I don't think there's anything interesting in this section of the pouch. Then you can probably see there that the bladder for the rebreather is underneath that canister. Now I can't actually see that connected physically to the canister, so I'm not sure how you'd um, sort of do that all into it. Uh, if we look underneath the uh, bladder in there, you can see that there's nothing actually else hidden in there. So, I think in that section, uh, it looks like there might be a clasp to release the um, scrubber unit from the system. So, let's do that. Yeah, here we go. That lever there uh, is what's used to open this bit up. So, flick that down push that in, lift it up, the band comes off. Okay, here's the scrubber unit. So, I'm assuming something to do with the pin up there and that plunger is how you'd activate it. This is from 91 as well, the uh, scrubber unit. It's fairly heavy, a scrubber unit, actually. Um, so it might look like a coffee can filter, but it's really not. This is actually a CO2 scrubber. It's quite a complicated piece of technology, really. Um, it says 99 on the bottom, so I don't know if that was when it actually expired. Ah, okay, there's the hose there. So what we do, as I said, and we're not going to do it because I'm not rebreather trained and I don't want to blow myself up or suffocate or poison myself. With the bladder, you would connect the bladder, um, or like obviously the bladder in there, to what I would assume would be one end of the scrubber unit, and I don't know which end because I'm not trained to do it. Um, so, you know, like maybe like that or something, that will connect into the scrub unit, then the scrub unit will be back there. Then the rebreather itself would connect to probably that end there. And I'm assuming that when you breathe out, the air passes through the scrubber unit into the bladder. Then when you breathe back in, uh, air passes from the bladder through the scrubber unit again into the rebreather. So, that's how I'm assuming it would work. Now, what is interesting, and I don't know if this is when they like reactivate these or refill them, you'll notice there's actually a threaded bit there. So, whether or not this would work with a gas mask, I don't know. Like, you know, you could also just plug it in as a scrubber unit into a respirator. Um, I got, as I said, I am not going to mess about with a scrubber unit at all because, you know, I know their reputation. Uh, I think B-Store was telling me that, you know, he's actually been experimenting on one of these scrubber units, you know, trying to put it into volatile conditions to see if anything happens. And he said so far there's nothing happened with it, so, you know. Um, they're probably not as dodgy as people make them out to be, but as I've said, with rebreathers, please do not mess about with them um, unless you are trained. Obviously, if you are trained and decide you really want to play around with one of these, then go for it. However, if you don't have any rebreather training, probably best to keep it as a really cool looking keepsake. Um, I mean, this is a really cool setup bag. I actually like this more than the IP5 because the IP5 just has the big bladder around your neck, um, you know, connected to the mask, and then. This, I kind of like how this one's all built into a satchel, it's a lot cooler. Um, so yeah, this is very cool, so let's see now if I can work out how to reassemble all this and put it back in its bag. 
Right, let's see if I can figure out how to get this all back together. There's also a plug in the bladder section here, so I'm not sure exactly what that attaches to. Um, just as a note, before I sort of tidy up this video, you can actually kind of, you know, partially remove all this from the bag if you wanted to as well. Not that I need to for the video, but um, there's that. Maybe um, this normally has like a plug in the uh, pipe there. I have no idea. Anyway, let's tuck that back in round the back there. We'll lift the bladder up and we'll put the instructions back at the back of that. I don't really want to like rip or damage these, but it's quite hard to actually get it all in. Uh, yeah, let's just do that for the moment. Make it a bit easy. Lift the scrubby unit back up. Pop the scrubby unit down. Tuck it underneath. Right, there we go. So that's like that. So I'm assuming now, um, you know, I'm free to put the mask back in. So let's do that. So I have no idea which way this is meant to go. Maybe I should have paid more attention to taking it out. I'm assuming it will fit back in with the outserts on, because I wouldn't expect you had to take the outserts in and out every time you, um, you know, wanted to do something with it. I think this is one of these typical things where it always looks a lot easier, uh, you know, on a video or something than when you actually try and do it. Anyway, I think that's back in there properly, so let's close that back up now. So you can see that sticking out there. Now, um, which way around did the canister go? It probably doesn't actually matter. So assume it goes in the middle like that. The metal band comes over it. And then that links into there somehow. Come on. Do I have to move the clasp at all? Ah, yeah, so I have to move the clasp. Then put the clasp back. Then the rebreather canister is back in there. Now, I don't know if that's totally centralised or not. Um, so, you know, there's that. Then, you would simply put the bag back over the top. Then, these connectors to the bag connect back in like that. And that. And the whole thing is back and nice and tidy. What I'll tell you what I really like with this IP4, um, as much as I'm never going to use it as a rebreather, it's a lot tidier than the IP5. Let me get you the IP5 bag for comparison. I'm not going to get all this out again. See, that's the IP5 bag. It's a bit bigger. Um, whether or not the IP5 has different characteristics than the IP4. They're not too different, it seems, when they're all tidied up, but I'll tell you what, that is a much nicer case for putting a rebreather back into compared to the IP5, which is, um, like, you know, an absolute giant pain to repack when you've got the bladder out, because you have to kind of press all the air out the bladder to fit it back in the bag and everything else. And it never looks as neat as it did when you first got out, whereas with the IP5, uh, sorry, the IP4M, or whatever it is, um, you know, that's all quite sort of nice and solid back in there. So, yeah, there you go. So if you are interested in one of these, as said, I've given you all the warnings I think I need to about rebreathers. Please do not mess about with them. Uh, is that something else? No, that's no, just how the bag's got like a little pocket there that links into the main thing. Um, so I think I've given you all the warnings I actually need to give you about these. Um, as far as I'm aware as well, you can link all the cables in. It feels like... Um, you know, while it's still in the bag, like you could put a cable through there, get at some of the bits there if you needed to. So I assume that's why the bag's set up like that. So if you're interested in these, Beast or sells them on his eBay page. I think they were seventy pounds when I had a look. So again, a big thank you for him sending this to me for free. Um, but again, are you going to be using a rebreather? So obviously weigh that up. It is a very cool collectible, but as I said, I would not really recommend it being used. Um, the mask itself could probably maybe be connected to a modern scrubber unit, I don't know, and then still work. Uh, so it's something to consider. The mask itself seems very good. Um, he sells the IP5s much cheaper, so if you just wanted to get a rebreather, you might want to actually go for an IP5, not an IP4. Um, but like I said, the IP4 unit's definitely nicer. Now the funny thing is, because like I said, I think this is an IP4M. Um, the actual... Because I don't want to get this out and check the date on it again and have to repack it, but... I have a feeling the IP4M is almost more modern than the IP5, so I don't know if it went IP4, IP5, and then IP4M, because they realised this was a better setup for doing it than that one, I really don't know. Um, but there you go, so that is the IP4M, I believe, um, rebreather. Very cool, but as I have said many times, uh, you know, 
Firstly, the link will be below if you are interested to be Stores page where you can look for all this stuff. And a big thank you to him again. But as said, with rebreathers, please, please, please read up on them before getting one and messing about with them. Because as much as I don't want you to die um, by messing about with rebreathers, I also don't want nobody else to be able to buy them. And, you know, like with a lot of this gas mask stuff, because somebody decides to be an idiot and go jumping into a lake with a rebreather on with no training and then turning into fish food. So, there you go. Um, IP4M rebreather. Looks really cool. Um, seems to be really cool. Um, in a real emergency, I guess, if somehow there was no oxygen, I could, um, you know, with nothing to lose, set it up and um, pull the pin and actually use it. But, as I've said, for actual normal people, you kind of don't really have any use for a rebreather. Of course, some people are into rebreather diving and everything else, um, so they do use rebreathers and are trained to use them. Um, but as far as I'm aware, this would be, it works on land and works underwater rebreather, but obviously you can't go below a certain depth of it, because then you can compromise the thing, and if water gets into a rebreather, it's very bad. Um, but there you go. That's the IP4M, I believe, rebreather. Very cool. And as I said, link will be below if you're interested in it, or other similar stuff.